Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about Iowa Bradin. What is this drag Iowa Bradin? From the name of this drag we can get few of the important information about this drag. Here we can find the term Brad within the name of this drag which indicates this drug produces the bradycardia resulting in slowing of the heart rate. By reducing the heart rate it reduces the cardiac work that's why this drug is useful in the treatment of heart failure. So ivabradin is one of the drug which reduces the heart rate and it is useful in the treatment of heart failure. Similarly we can find another term i at the starting of this drug name. Here the letter i indicates this drug acts on the ion channels. Particularly this drug blocks IF channels. These are the funny ion channels which are permeable to two different ions such as sodium as well as potassium. And these ion channels are also called as HCN ion channels. So here HCN indicates hyperpolation activated cyclic nucleotide gated ion channels. So these ion channels are blocked by Iowa Bradin. So Iowa Bradin is a ion channel blocker and it produces the bradycardia thereby it is useful in the treatment of stable chronic heart failure. Similarly we can find other letters within the name of this drug. Here the letter V indicates this drug produces some visual side effects. Similarly A indicates it produces atrial fibrillation. So along with the bradycardia this drug produces visual effects as well as atrial fibrillation. These are the three important side effects produced by Iowa Bradin. So today in this video we are going to discuss about this Iowa Bradin, how this drug acts, what are the important precautions, drug interactions, contraindications and important side effects as well as clinical use of this drug we will discuss in this video. So we have seen that Iowa Bradin is useful in the patients with stable chronic heart failure. In these patients because of heart failure the cardiac output is somewhat reduced so when the heart is going to contract, it is going to eject the blood and what are the fraction of the blood that is going to be ejected out of the left ventricles can be denoted as left ventricular ejection fraction and when this LVEF is less than or equal to 35%, it indicates a serious heart failure in the patients. This condition in the patients may stimulate fear of the pathways resulting in the stimulation of sympathetic system as well as increase the automaticity. So by these mechanisms catecholamines are released and they can act on the heart thereby heart rate is going to be increased. So in these patients with left ventricular ejection fraction less than or equal to 35 percent we can observe increased heart rate, irregular heartbeats as well as cardiac arrest in the patients. So in order to control these complications Iowa Bradin can be used which can act on the pacemaker cells thereby to reduce the heart rate preventing irregular heartbeats as well as cardiac arrest in the patients. So Iowa Bradin is useful in the patients who are having stable chronic heart failure. So Iowa Bradin can be used in these patients which reduce the risk of unstable heart failure as well as sudden cardiac arrest in the patients. Particularly this drug is useful in the patients who are having left ventricular ejection fraction less than or equal to 35%. And the patients with sinus rhythm greater than or equal to 70 beats per minute where the heart rate is increased and in those patients where the beta blockers are ineffective. For instance if a patient is given with the beta blockers and the maximum dose is achieved but still heart rate is not controlled in such patients Iowa Bradin can be given. And finally this drug can also be given in the patients who are contraindicated with beta blockers. For instance, beta blockers at a high dose they produce bronchospasm and they are contraindicated in asthmatic patients. So in such patients or in any other contraindication of beta blockers, Iowa Bradin can be given in order to control the heart rate in the patients. This drug can also be used in the pediatric patients with greater than 6 months. In these pediatrics we can observe one of the condition dilated cardiomyopathy DCM. So this is a condition the patients which leads to symptomatic heart failure and in these patients we can observe elevated heart rate which is again controlled by Iowa Bradin. Now let us see the chemical nature of this drug. So this is the structure of Iowa Bradin and here we can observe one of the heterocyclic ring system 
a seven member ring system with one nitrogen is fused with benzene so this is nothing but benzazepine let us give the numbering to this benzazepine so this is one two three four five six seven eight nine now nitrogen is present at the third position and ketone group is present at the fourth position so this ring is nothing but 1h3 benzazepine 4 ohm that is the ring system present in ivabradin so ivabradin is a benzazepine derivative now let us see how this drug acts just we have discussed that ivabradin is going to reduce the heart rate in the patients thereby to reduce the cardiac work and improves the symptoms of heart failure all these actions of ivabradin are attributed to its action on one of the ion channel hyperpolarization activated cyclic nucleotide gated ion channels they are commonly known as hcn they are also called as funny ion channels because through the same ion channel two different ions such as sodium as well as potassium are permeable among these hcn ion channels one of the ion channel that is more expressed in the cardiac pacemaker cells is the hcn4 and these ion channels are activated under hyperpolarization so during the diastole the pacemaker potential is going to be developed and an inward current is generated through these ion channels and these ion channels are also controlled by cyclic nucleotides such as cyclic amp now within the heart the cyclic amp can increase the activity of hcn4 thereby it can increase the chronotropic activity here sympathetic system mainly activates the cyclic amp through beta 1 receptors thereby it increase the heart rate as well as force of contraction that's why beta blockers can be used to reduce the heart rate but when these beta blockers are contraindicated in the patients or they are not tolerated in such conditions ivabradin can be used to control the heart rate so now let us see the pacemaker potential at the sc node and how these ion channels are involved so this is the different phases of action potential within the pacemaker cells at the pacemaker cells the resting membrane potential is somewhat less negative value compared with the non pacemaker cells so around minus 50 millivolts to minus 60 millivolts will be the resting membrane potential at the pacemaker cells and this is the another potential minus 40 millivolts which is the threshold potential where voltage gated calcium channels are open to produce depolarization but here the important thing is the development of pacemaker potential pacemaker potential is initiated by one of the ion channels if funny ion channels which are going to produce inward sodium current and they are activated by hyperpolarization of the membrane the entry of sodium produces a small increase in the membrane potential which is then followed by opening of t type calcium channels which produce influx of a small amount of the calcium further raising the membrane potential and finally the next role is going to be taken by l type calcium channels which produce another influx of calcium ions thereby they produce a depolarization and the membrane potential crosses to the positive values resulting in the complete depolarization of the pacemaker cells and after the depolarization potassium channels are opened thereby again membrane potential decreases to the negative values in this way pacemaker potential is going to be developed during the diastole where the inward sodium current is initiating the development of pacemaker potential now ivabradin can block these if channels thereby it reduce the pacemaker potential which results in the slowing of the heart rate and we can observe a curve like this so this is the sc node at the sc node three important ion channels are present one is the if channels which are the funny ion channels and second one is the t type calcium channels and another one is the l type calcium channels now sodium ions as well as potassium ions can enter into the membrane through this if channels and calcium can enter through both t type as well as l type calcium channels when the sca myocytes are under hyperpolarization they allow entry of sodium and a small amount of the potassium through these if channels so this produces a small raise in the membrane potential suppose the resting membrane potential is minus 50 millivolts then potential of the membrane is slowly raised which activates the t type calcium channels these t type calcium channels are called as pacemaker calcium channels 
Now a small amount of calcium can enter into the membrane which further raises the membrane potential. And when this membrane potential achieves to the threshold potential, the L-type calcium channels are activated and they can allow the entry of calcium leading to further elevation of the membrane potential and complete depolarization. So these three type of ion channels are involved in the development of pacemaker potential but the initiation is produced by HCN channels or IF channels. Now ivabradin can block these IF channels thereby inhibits the entry of sodium ions into the membrane which inhibits the development of pacemaker potential thereby reduce the heart rate in the patients. Now let us see the precautions of ivabradin. One of the important precautions of ivabradin is that this drug produces the bradycardia in the patients. We have seen that term brad within the name of this drug indicates that this drug produces a bradycardia and ivabradin can produce some sinus node dysfunction which reduce the atrioventricular conduction and when this atrioventricular conduction is significantly reduced it can produce some conduction block in the patients so it may lead to first degree heart block where there is a delay in the AV conduction otherwise it can lead to the second degree heart block where there is further suppression of conduction in the patients so ivabradin may increase the risk of heart block in the patients so in the patients who are having the first degree or second degree heart block this drug should be carefully given similarly bradycardia produced by ivabradin may result in fear of the cardiac arrhythmias so it can increase the QT interval within the ECG which may precipitate one of the fatal cardiac arrhythmias such as torse d pointis. And when this ivabradin is given with other drugs like calcium channel blockers such as diltiazem, verapamil which is going to act on the heart and reduce the heart rate and class 3 antiarrhythmic drugs like imidarone as well as sotalol, cardiotonics like digoxin. All these drugs can reduce the heart rate and they can further increase the bradycardia produced by ivabradin. Similarly, calcium channel blockers like diltiazem and verapamil, they can increase the levels of ivabradin which may further increase the risk of bradycardia in the patients. Another important precaution of ivabradin is that this drug can increase the risk of atrial fibrillation in the patients. At the pulmonary venous myocardium, particularly HCN4 channels are important. Now ivabradin can block these HCN4 ion channels which reduce the IF current and because of reduction of IF current it may stimulate other pathways resulting in the increased atrial fibrillation. So ivabradin can precipitate atrial fibrillation in the patients so care should be taken and any symptoms of atrial fibrillation are observed in the patients then ivabradin should be stopped in order to avoid a sudden cardiac arrest in the patients. Similarly, ivabradin can increase the fetal toxicity. So this drug can produce some fetal damage, particularly fetal cardiac damage as well as some bradycardia in the fetus. So this drug should not be given to the pregnant woman. What are the drug interactions? Ivabradin is mainly converted to metabolites by cytochrome P450 system and among them CYP3A4 is one of the important enzyme responsible for metabolism of ivabradin. So strong CYP3A4 inhibitors like azole antifungus such as itraconazole, ketoconazole, similarly macrolides like telithromycin, clarithromycin and protease inhibitors like ritonavir, nelfinavir, antidepressants like nifazidone, all these drugs can block the CYP3A4 activity and they inhibit the metabolism of ivabradin resulting in the elevated levels of this drug which leads to the toxicity in the patients. So these drugs are contraindicated with ivabradin because this combination produces severe bradycardia in the patients. Similarly, if you have the drugs like rifampicin, barbiturates like phenobarbital and phenytoin, St. John's Watt, all these drugs can induce the CYP3A4 activity, thereby they can increase the metabolism of ivabradin resulting in the loss of efficacy of this drug. Beta blockers like metoprolol, etanolol, acebutalol and other beta blockers mainly act on the beta 1 receptors and they reduce the heart rate. So these drugs can produce bradycardia as one of the important side effect. So when these drugs are given along with ivabradin, this combination produce severe bradycardia in the patients. So there is a significant drug interaction between beta blockers as well as ivabradin. What are the contraindications? Since this drug acts on the pacemaker cells such as SCNO, so this drug is contraindicated in the sinus syndrome 
where there is decreased sinus rhythm and conduction and in the patients having third degree heart block where there is complete arrest of atrioventricular conduction and in the patients with acute decompensated heart failure where this drug further complicates the heart failure and in the patient with severe hepatic impairment similar in the patients who are having significant bradycardia or patients who are using the pacemaker and they are depending on the pacemaker activity and finally along with strong CYP3A4 inhibitors with all these Ivabradin is strictly contraindicated. What are the side effects? The important side effects of Ivabradin we have already discussed one of the important side effects is the bradycardia second one it can increase the blood pressure resulting in the hypertension and it can also produce atrial fibrillation other side effects of this drug mainly include angioedema, erythema and some vertigo, urticaria, skin rashes and pruritus can be observed. Another important side effect of ivabradin is on the visual system. This drug can produce phosphines in the patients. This is one of the luminous phenomena that can be observed in the patients with the use of ivabradin because this drug can block hyperpolation activated ion channels within the eye which produce increased brightness in the visual field. The patients can observe an elevated brightness at the local areas of the visual field because of blocking of IH channels within the retina. So this drug can produce some increased brightness as well as halos and image decomposition. But this side effect is reversible whenever this drug is going to be stopped. Again, the visual activity is going to be restored to the normal level. How it is given? This drug is available as tablet as well as oral solution and the initial dose of the drug is given at 5 mg twice daily but the initial dose can also be reduced to 2.5 mg based on the conditions of the patient and the dose can be increased based on the control of heart rate in the patients. The maximum dose that can be achieved is 7.5 mg given twice daily along with the 4. So this is the doses regimen in the adults. But in the children with body weight less than 40 kg, the dose of this drug is given as 0 0.05 mg per kg given twice daily along with the food. So that's about this drug, Ivabradin. Within the name, I indicate this drug acts on the ion channel and it blocks the IF channels which are also called as HCN, hyperpolarization activated cyclic nucleotide gated ion channels. And another term BRAD indicates this drug produces a bradycardia thereby it reduces the heart rate which reduces the cardiac work in the patients. And the letter V indicates visual effects. This drug can produce phosphines in the patients, increased brightness at the local areas of the visual field and A indicates it produces atrial fibrillation. So these three are the important precautions. This drug produces bradycardia, atrial fibrillation as well as phosphines in the patients. And imabradin should be carefully given with other drugs which produce a bradycardia such as calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, class 3 antiarrhythmic agents as well as cardiotonics like digoxin. And this drug can also produce some fetal damage so this drug is not preferred in the pregnant woman. In the patients having cardiac conduction problems such as sinus syndrome, third degree heart block or patients with severe bradycardia hypotension or in hepatic impairment in all these conditions this drug is contraindicated. This drug is available as a tablet as well as oral solution. The initial dose is started at 5 mg twice daily but the dose may be also reduced to 2.5 mg twice daily. The maximum dose is 7.5 mg given twice daily. But in the patients with body weight less than 40 kg the dose of the drug is given based on the body weight. It is given at 0.05 mg per kg given twice daily along with the four. So that's about this drug Ivabradin. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.